Hello everyone and welcome to this podcast for genetics. In this podcast we're going to focus on DNA repair. Over the past few podcasts we've talked about how you could take a gene on a chromosome and how that gene could become mutated. We discussed these mutations at the gene level where we talked about insertions and deletions and substitutions. We also talked about these mutations more at the phenotypic level where we talked about how these substitutions could lead to various kinds of amino acid changes. We talked about missense mutations, nonsense mutations, silent neutral mutations. We talked about frame shift mutations and ultimately how these mutations could lead to health problems. We also talked about how they could be beneficial as well. Now remember we have over 20,000 genes and our cells divide on a fairly regular basis yet we don't accumulate a great deal of mutated genes. Some of that is we have a lot of DNA in our body that doesn't code for protein. But the main reason these mutations don't accumulate is because the mutations can be repaired through DNA repair mechanisms. Our genome is assaulted on a daily basis with mutations, but we have a very robust DNA repair mechanism in our bodies, in our cells, to make sure all those mutations don't accumulate. Now in the next podcast, we'll talk more about how when these repair mechanisms can't keep up with the mutations and how that can lead to things like cancer. But in this podcast, I'm going to focus on DNA repair. How do we make mutations go away, so to speak? Your book discusses several mechanisms, and I'm just going to list them right here. Mismatch repair, direct repair, base, excision repair, which we'll often call B-E-R, and then there is a mechanism called nucleotide excision repair. And this is often abbreviated as N-E-R. And then your book also discusses repair of double-stranded breaks. And we talked a little bit about double-stranded breaks and how that's caused by things like x-rays. However, in this podcast and for this class, we're going to focus mainly on base excision repairs and nucleotide excision repairs. Let's begin with a brief discussion of what base excision repair mechanisms are. All right, so base excision repair. These mechanisms are found in both bacteria and animals. We're just going to talk about a, the basic setup of it, but recognize that the eukaryotic mechanisms are going to be a little bit more complex, but the nuts and bolts of it are pretty much the same. Let's begin with a strand of DNA. And in this strand of DNA, we have our nucleotides. I'm going to show the nucleotides here as a red circle. That's where the hydrogen bonds come in, remember, between the bases. And the black line here just represents the phosphate and the sugar. And what these mechanisms will do is they will scan the DNA for any modified basis, which I'll just show here in blue. So that's a modified base. It could also be uracil, which shouldn't be in DNA, but this mechanism gets rid of uracils that accidentally get insert inserted here. Everything else is fine. All the other bases are fine. Now, the name says base excision repair. So the first thing it's going to do, as the name implies, is it's going to get rid of the base and only the base. And in this example, only the base of the distorted one. So all the other bases are going to be re remain here and they're going to be fine. But this distorted base has now been removed and it gets removed by an enzyme called DNA glycosylase. There are several kinds of DNA glycosylases that get rid of different kinds of modified bases. But for our purposes, let's just call it collectively a DNA glycosylase. And you see here in the picture, the sugar shown by the black line and the phosphate group shown by this, the backbone here, it remains. So the next thing that has to happen is that sugar has to be removed and the phosphodiester backbone here has to be cut. And then when that happens, the final stage comes along here and the correct base is now added. So at the end here, this modified base has been removed and the correct one has been added. And so now this mutation has been repaired. And now, once it enters the cell cycle again, and through S phase, the correct base will be added during division. All right, next I want to talk about the second one you need to know about. And the second mechanism is called nucleotide excision repair, or NER. We talked briefly about how thymine dimers can form due to UV light hitting our skin. So let's talk, review that and then talk about how this repair mechanism is going to repair these thymine dimers. So remember, we're going to start off with our DNA. And I'm going to draw a couple bases here, or a few anyhow, a G, a T, a T, and a C. So guanine, thymine, thymine, cytosine. And then we're going to draw the complementary bases here. C for cytosine, A for adenine, and G for guanine. So this is the way it should look. This is the way it normally looks, the wild type version. So let's just write wild type. We can even give it our good friends here, five prime and three prime polarities. And then what happens is that UV light, either from the sun or other sources, hit the cell containing this DNA. And what happens here is that these two thymines here, which don't interact with each other directly, will now interact with each other and form a bond, a covalent bond. So let's write our DNA here again. 
except one exception. These thymines are going to kind of extend up in such a way that they're still attached to the backbone here, but now they form a bond with each other or bonds with each other. That's why we call these thymine dimers because there's two of them that are binding with each other. We still have our adenines here. They're not binding to the thymines anymore, but they're still there. There's a cytosine and our guanine and our guanine and our cytosine here. The problem comes when we try to copy this cell or rather we try to copy this DNA in the cell that's been attacked by UV light. I guess I should write UV here. This distortion of the DNA can cause problems in the replication of the cell and can lead to additional mutations forming. So it's important that we fix this mutation. And there are many proteins and many steps in this process, but the first thing that has to happen is there's going to be a set of enzymes that scan the DNA looking for distortions. So large groups of enzymes here working together move along here and when they come across these distortions the enzyme stops and initiates the repair mechanism. So now other enzymes come along here and they're going to do something that we've seen before. It's going to take this region of DNA and it's going to open it up such that we do still have our T's here that are forming these thymine dimers. So we'll put our G's and our C's here. Now this might look a little like replication when we open up the DNA and it is a lot like replication except we're not replicating the DNA we're just going to fix this part right here. But as it pulls the DNA apart just like during replication we don't want these single stranded pieces of DNA coming back to each other. So we have our former friends here these single stranded binding proteins bind here to keep the two strands from coming back together again. So let's write that over here so we can keep track of it. Single stranded binding proteins bind. The next thing that happens is that the, the nucleotides are removed. Remember with base excision repair at first we only removed the base but with nucleotide excision repair we're going to excise damaged nucleotides and not just the damaged ones but several other nucleotides around it. So it's going to cut along here and along here and then this part here that contains the thymine dimers is going to be degraded and lost. Then the next thing that happens again this will be familiar if you remember back from replication this gap is now filled in. So let's write the gap is filled in by DNA polymerase. So let's draw that in here. Here's our DNA polymerase. And remember, just as we saw with DNA replication, it's reading this strand. So it's going to read this template down here in the three prime to the five prime direction. And it's going to add DNA growing five prime to three prime, taking advantage of this three prime hydroxyl group. So the new DNA will be laid down going in this direction because the DNA polymerase is moving in this direction. Again, reading three prime to five prime strand. So it'll be moving in this direction, laying new DNA down five prime to three prime DNA replication. This very last step here, this very last bond that has to be formed can't be formed by DNA polymerase. It is formed by DNA ligase. So DNA ligase will come along here and it will seal that final bond. And to be complete, I should have indicated the correct base pairs here, G, T, T, and C. So you'll notice that the thymines are added here because they're still complementary to these adenines but the thymine dimers, the, their ability to interact with each other is no longer the case. So now the error has been fixed and we will form the correct DNA with our correct bases of G, T, T, C and C, A, A, G on this new fully repaired strand of DNA. Now, before we end this podcast, I wanted to bring back a, a disease we had talked about previously. And we're going to write the name right here. And remember this disease called xeroderma pigmentosum. Remember that this disease here is characterized by the individuals having large melanomas, that is skin cancers. And that is because their skin is damaged by the UV radiation and they're unable to go through this process. And the main reason they can't go through this process is because it's blocked and it's blocked because of the DNA polymerase ETA. This DNA polymerase ETA is the DNA polymerase that repairs this gap after it's been excised. So this is deleted or mutated that is, this DNA polymerase ETA. These individuals are no longer able to repair UV damaged these thymine dimers pers persist, and as long as they persist in the individual, when the DNA is copied during the cell cycle, mutations will be passed on to the next generation. And typically what happens is that this kind of a mutation in our genome will lead to frame shifts. So they can be rather devastating to the individual. Okay, that is all I have for this podcast. If you have any questions at all, please make sure you come see me. If not, I'll see you in class. Bye.